Well, hi everyone, welcome back to Figure It Out. Well, I gotta be honest, this video may be a slight departure uh, from what we're used to on this channel. It's pretty close though, so I would love for you to give it a shot. I have a friend of mine who is a principal at a local elementary school, and I've been going over there doing some tutoring for kids, which I've done for a number of years. And it got to this point where she asked me, I mean, she had a real need. She said, I've got to have somebody step in and be a science and math teacher to some fifth graders. And I was at this kind of juncture in my career where I said, okay, I'll give it a shot. I've gotten certified, so happy about that. And um, I think it's time to do a little something. And I wanted to do something for the kids. So we had been studying in science, fifth grade science, the water cycle. So I thought, you know what I might do in order to give a visual representation of what this might look like? I'm going to build a diorama of a water cycle. Now you might think, well, what does a water cycle diorama have to do with action figures? And truthfully, not much. I don't know, there's some interesting things that certainly are transferable if you're building a diorama uh, using action figures. And so maybe give it a shot. Let's see how we can build a water cycle. And, and if you're a science teacher, welcome to the channel. We'd love for you to do a water cycle diorama for your kids. Or maybe your students do one for you. So I'm beginning this project using some EPS foam or expanded polystyrene or styrofoam. It glues together great with this Super 77 spray adhesive. So I've glued together uh, some mountains and I'm going to trace out what I want it to look like. Now I'm just going to take my hot wire knife and start carving out the mountain structure. Stuff cuts very easy with a, a hot knife, and so definitely recommend you get one if you're going to do a lot of carving of this EPS foam. So the mountains are this styrofoam or EPS foam. The base I'm making out of XPS foam or extruded polystyrene. Uh, that's the foam that you can get at Home Depot or Lowe's or a big box uh, store like that. It's usually used for um, like home insulation. So you can see that green piece of XPS foam. Uh, I've put a eighth inch plywood base underneath it just to give it additional structure st stability. After I've traced what the mountain's gonna look like on the base, I'm gonna go ahead and carve out a depression. This is for the river to run into the ocean. And so I'm just gonna take my knife and start gouging out some space there for uh, the water to um, pool up. I wanna make a little river delta kind of going into the ocean as uh, we also do some talk about landforms and delta is one of them. So uh, that's what that's for. I had to double up the XPS foam boards so that only had one inch um, size pieces. So now I'm just carving out what will be kind of the ocean floor for this project. Again, that hot wire knife just makes it a lot easier than doing a regular knife. Well, of course, there's some rough cuts with the knife, so we're going to take the sandpaper and uh, get this cleaned up. Glue the mountain down using that same Super 77 spray adhesive. That's good. I've got this little scoop that I'm going to use as a sun. So the sun is obviously super important in the water cycle. Uh, I need to cut it down a little bit, so I'm going to take my snips and uh, cut this down a little bit so I can stick this inside the foam backing and make the sun in the sky. I'm gonna backlight that sun with some LED lights, and you can use one of those tea candle lights. Uh, for the sun, I would suggest you get the non-flickering kind. All right, I'm gonna put um, some, this is just 
glue, Elmer's glue, school glue, uh, watered down quite a bit. Um, and I'm gonna get little squares of toilet paper and I'm gonna start gluing this down. This is gonna give a nice texture to, uh, this is where the water part of the diorama is. And so this is gonna give a nice texture to the bottom of the water. So as you just lay it down, you put a base of glue and then you put some glue on top of it and you can see how it will kind of wrinkle up nicely as you uh, push it down with the brush. For those overlapping parts, the edges, just tap the brush up and down on those edges and they virtually disappear. So you don't want to have a lot of lines in there. So just take those edges and tap them down with the, the, the bristles and uh, they just smush into one another. You definitely have to have enough water in that glue in order to make that work. So be sure you water down sufficiently. See a little bit of the delta that I'm forming and the river as it comes off the mountains. Well, to cover the EPS foam, I'm, instead of using that um, toilet paper technique, I'm just going to use some of the cellulose fiber that I've got. I'm going to put in some drywall compound with water and mix it up, and it, it's more rock texture and it goes on very easily. You get it very mud-like uh, to where it'll cling and it will fill in all the holes of that EPS foam. So you're not gonna, it won't look like styrofoam when we're done with it, but it'll harden. It'll make a very solid surface. There's my son. I'm just gonna put that on the back. You can see I have those XPS foam backing on there and just uh, cut a little hole for that sun to fit in and put some lights behind it. Everything gets painted with this um, this primer that I've made up. It's half um, black latex paint and half uh, matte Mod Podge. And so it's a 50-50 mix. That Mod Podge just hardens up really nicely. And then that black, uh, when we paint over that black surface, if you know you ever nick your project or whatever, you're not going to see the white. Uh, you would see it, it basically blends in the black. I'm just using a burnt umber, a um, little brown as an undercoat for the mountains and the ground, just to start with. We'll come back with a, some other um, colors and textures here in a minute. You know, the point of this project is to not make it to scale. It's not about scale in this. It's about really teaching a little bit about uh, the water cycle. So I'm not worried about how big the mountains are, that sort of thing. I've got the project now laying on its back and I'm going to work on the sky and I found these gouache paints and uh, they're a little better than the latex they move around a lot and I'm just putting some on there and trying to create sort of a gradient dark at the top because I'm going to demonstrate a storm as a part of the water cycle over there in the uh, top corner which would be in the bottom corner of your screen uh, but top corner in the project over the mountains and then I'm going to try to lighten it. This squash paint, though, I got on sale. It was crazy inexpensive, like super cheap. And uh, but it spreads around and 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 blends really well. I was very pleased with it. Uh, these are tiny little tubes, but uh, and so I used a lot of it. But man, to make this sky and to kind of blend it like that, I, I, it turned out really well. I was very pleased with how that paint. Uh, was able to move around with the brush and, and uh, I think it would do better than that, um, the paint you get at Walmart. So, um, but I found that paint at a hobby store in the clearance aisle and it was so cheap I bought a ton of it. I'm doing the same kind of gradient with the water uh, of the ocean parts and I've got the project standing back the way it should normally. On the, on the bottom of the water, the ocean, I'm just going to do this light uh, dry brush. I'm taking a very light sky blue and I'm coming back just to kind of highlight those those caps, those waves. Again, this is not about scale. It's not about making it look like I'm going to put little fish in there or anything like that. I'm just trying to highlight the water cycle, but I want to dress this up a little bit. Don't make it too flat. And so uh, putting some of those highlights in there with this dry brush technique. Uh, is very helpful. It kind of makes it pop with color. I'm do the same dry brush, but I'm gonna use a lighter tan color on the mountains just to make those um, those high points really pop out, make it look more like stone. And so you can see those mountains got a very stone-like appearance once we get that dry brush on top of it. After this dry brush, I'm gonna come back here with this dark wash. 
This is a dark, um, very watered down ink. And so coming back just now, we're pulling out some of those low lights and sort of knocking down uh, too much of that uh, highlight texture. Taking some white paint and just kind of thinking, all right, where would snow land? So again, I'm not loading up the brush too heavy, but just uh, tapping some off of my palette and then thinking through, all right, if snow were to land on this mountain, I want some of that brown to come through, where would it land? And so you can see, we're just gonna dab that on there. Again, those mountains would be crazy tall if this were to scale, but that's not, not the point. Now I'm taking that um, watered down uh, school glue um, and we're just gonna take some, this is grass that I got off of Amazon. Uh, train modelers use it, just putting it in a little sieve there and, and knocking it onto the project. You can see that white coming through, but that all dries clear when it's fully dry. Found some, again, model train trees on Amazon, these are super easy. I wasn't, I could have stopped and made trees, but, but uh, that really wasn't the point of this project. So I wanted to just get something that would look decent. So I found these trees. We're gonna cluster them together here on the base of the mountains, maybe put some up kind of going on the, on the sides of the mountains a little bit, but not too much. We're not gonna overdo it. It's not about a forest. Uh, we're not doing a ecology thing. We're doing just a little bit of trees at the base just to dress it up a little bit. So now to make some clouds, I've got this pillow stuffing, this polyester fill, so pulling some of this out. We're gonna shape it as best we can. I'm gonna use that same Super 77 spray adhesive and uh, spray the back and just stick them on there. It looks really good once we get that going. So, um, and that spray adhesive works really, really well on a lot of different things. So I would highly encourage the use of that project uh, product. So a couple dark clouds there demonstrating rain. I thought to make rain, what I might do is I might want to just use some um, nylon filament or just some fishing line. And maybe if I glued a bunch of these up underneath this cloud falling, it might look pretty cool or look like rain. So. This is an arduous part of the project, just cutting these to some length and putting a tiny little dab of super glue on the end and shoving it up inside this polyester cloud. I didn't like how they were just going every which way. You might think, oh, that looks like a chaotic storm, but I kind of didn't like it. I wanted it to look like sort of uh, rain sweeping down the mountain. And so I made some of them looser on the left-hand side to kind of make it look like there was some motion there. And so I glued them all down. I wanted to pour a red, I've never done resin before. And I thought I'll just use resin for this water. So I wanted to figure out how to do that. So I mixed up some resin, glued up the edges there so that it'll keep its form. And uh, this took two pours uh, of the resin that I mixed up. So poured one batch, got about halfway full and then mixed up a second batch. Uh, and and once this set up, I mixed up a second batch and poured it. I'm not showing that on this video, but you can get the idea. I had a huge panic moment in this. So this first pour, uh, it started leaking there on that, um, what looks like on the right side, kind of right there. And I had to jump back in with a lot of glue. And man, when I jumped in with a lot of glue, it really held on to this little Lexan that I had on the end here. And so it wouldn't release like the other side did. Um, so it just took a little bit of, of coaxing to get this thin lexing uh, off of the resin just because of how much glue I had to put underneath there to hold it on there so it wouldn't just fall out all over the place in my uh, workshop, my studio. So um, what you want to talk about a heart attack moment, oh my gosh, it's all leaking out, what do I do? So, but I got it fixed, it's fine, and it, it ended up like I wanted it to. So it looks really cool, that resin does. So I'm taking some high gloss Mod Podge and I'm going to create some wave shapes. Now this is going on white, but it will actually dry clear and I'm gonna have to come back and do some highlights on this. So this clear look, it, it does look good. It keeps that, that, uh, that um, 
resin from just being completely flat when you start putting this on the top of it. And so um, kind of wanted to mix it up a little bit, make it look wave-like. And uh, now I'm doing just some touch up from gluing down the rain. I need to touch up the mountain a little bit. So I'm coming back with some of the paint, uh, clearing out those little white spots from the super glue. Coming back now with some white and highlighting those waves from that high gloss Mod Podge, uh, making this look like it could be water flowing out from the river, but then back up onto the shore. So I think that's looking pretty decent. All right, well, I've cut out these arrow signs that I'm gonna put on the project that are, will demonstrate the uh, water cycle itself. Um, I am using the, the card stock on top of this XPS foam, this one inch XPS foam, and it's actually a pretty decent guide for the hot knife, for the wire, and it doesn't burn through the paper if you run it quickly enough, and so I'm just moving it through there. I didn't want them to be fully one inch, which is what the, the foam is, and so I'm just cutting them down now a little bit to make them about a quarter inch pronounced. That's what they look like. Uh, I kind of put my hand in the resin and accidentally touched the back of the project, so I'm just going to glue a little baby cloud over here so he'll never know. There it goes. Now I'm just using some... This is actually some um, florist wire and uh, it's pretty heavy duty but easy to cut and so I'm using that to make the arrows kind of pronounced off the, the back of the project itself just to give it a little depth. Well, with all the signs in place, we finally got it done. I'm happy about how like the, the sun and the lightning all turned out. I mean, it has a switch over here, reach all the way over. Uh, you can see this cloud starts to illuminate and flicker and that's to illustrate lightning. It's, and of course I have the sun over here. Um, so just demonstrating the water cycle as we have evaporation moving to condensation, you know, moving toward precipitation and runoff and then back again. So. Um, you know, I, I think that that turned out pretty good. The little, um, the little fishing line or the uh, little nylon line that I used to illustrate the rain, uh, it kind of pulls a little bit on this cotton. And so I'm not sure that's the best way to illustrate it. It looks good, but I found that, that uh, this piece is sagging a little bit. And so I've had to sort of glue it up and try to secure it a little bit better. There may be a better way. I would love to hear some of your ideas in the comments. So if you have some other ideas on what you might do, uh, as well. Another thing I figured out was uh, I, I could probably do these waves better. I think the next time I'm going to explore some different ways, some different directions. Uh, for these waves, I just put down that uh, gloss Mod Podge and then painted them up, but I think I think I could do it better. And so I'm really looking forward to maybe doing some kind of ocean scene, something with waves something I can really try to figure out how we can make that look more realistic. But uh, all in all, I'm, I'm pleased with it. And I think it would make a good addition to a classroom as well as uh, if you have a project yourself that you're working on for science and you would like to demonstrate a water cycle, I think you can use some of the techniques here in order to get that done. And of course, if you're here and figured out and you're wanting to do something for um, a movie scene or action figures, there's a lot of transferable principles from this particular diorama that you could use as well. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope that uh, you would please subscribe to the channel. That's, you know, that's a huge help to me. Uh, any comments you have uh, are welcome. I really appreciate the support that you guys give me. Of course, hit that like button and we will see you next time on Figure It Out.